Hey everyone, John Inner here, and today in the market psychology video, we're going to be taking a look at gold futures on their gap up, which really just ended up being a range, right? Now, if we look at Friday's price movement, we did have a slight downward bias, but there wasn't a whole lot to it before we found just a big range, right? We couldn't really get out of that area with obvious support at the lows, obvious resistance at the highs. And then we open up on Monday with a big gap above that area. That's going to be seen as a breakout attempt of that range. And as we know, most breakout attempts, at least initially, are going to be failures. So we're not looking for them to succeed. We're looking for them to want to pull back and find an area of support before actually proving it, right? We have a range, you look for a breakout, and then look to see what they do on the pullback. Is the pullback going to confirm the support there and that it is an actual breakout? Or are we going to fail and find ourselves right back to the bottom? That's really the situation that we ended up with on, on gold. We had the big gap up. We gapped up above even the most obvious swing high. And buyers initially tried taking it. Now, you could buy this one, but it's very aggressive. Because again, put it in context. We have a breakout of a range. 80% of the time, this is going to fail. So it's a very aggressive sentiment to try to be a buyer here. And that is seen by a massive amount of failure on the secondary bull candle. It followed it up. It tried getting the breakout move. And arguably, a lot of scalpers did get their targets. But they obviously weren't looking to hang on to it, given all that wick at the highs, before it turned right back around into a hugely bearish candle. Now we're starting to see we're getting a breakout. They're going to try to pull back. And the likely area to pull back to? Right back to where we found the top of the range from before. That is exactly where they win. And that's why there's a nice little sell there. You can sell into it knowing that we're probably going to fail above the prior high a day. We're probably going to push back down into that area of support before the buyers can either A, prove it, or B, fall apart. And we find ourselves right back down to the lows of the range from Friday. In this case, they pushed down to the lows and they found a bunch of support there. Arguably, buyers will buy into that, but it's very, very tough to be a buyer down here on this week of candle setups, right? These candles look like garbage. Nobody really wants to buy that area unless there's a lot of proof. And by the time they actually show the proof, it's a huge bull candle and it may be exhausted. The buyers may run out of steam. So we need to see what happens here. The sellers try coming back in, likely assuming that that was exhaustion, trying to sell the highs maybe of the range, maybe the the secondary candles close, trying to sell off that level and get it to go back down again. That trapped in more sellers. It went one tick underneath that low and immediately fired back up. And that is the clue. Now we have some good signaling. The sellers are now trapped in the market. Buyers, if they're aggressive, bought down here, but likely they waited and they want to wait for more information. And now with sellers trapped, their stops are right above the highs. And that should be enough fuel to the fire to shoot that thing right back towards the highs. And that's exactly why there is a buy there because we're looking for that exact scenario. Fire it right back up into the highs where we're going to look for short trades right back down towards the lows of the range. And that really wrapped up the morning. It fell completely apart and, and it just feels like it went to sleep. Everybody kind of got their profit early in the morning and well, it looks like they left the office. So with FOMC later in the week, that's probably why we're seeing the afternoon slow down. So just be careful going into the rest of the week, but just a beautiful example of using technical analysis as well as market psychology to know what's going on and trade it correctly. So that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, about it feel free to send an email in hopefully you found it useful and interesting and you learned something and we'll see you next time